to get into the word, but we're going to worship him just a moment, okay? Come on, put those hands together. Yep. Yep. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. We've come to bless you this morning. We've come to lift you up. Yes, we have. Woo! Here we go. Listen. There were walls between us. By the cross, you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. And here's what happened. Listen. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Oh, say you called me. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Sing it out. Your love. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Come on, put your hands together. We're singing about his love today. Woo! Come on, put those hands together. Oh. Come on, sing that first verse again. There were walls between us. Sing it out. Say, there were walls between us. By the cross, you came and broke them down. You broke them down. Come on, say, there were chains. There were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. Come on, say, you called me. You, you called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Oh, you called me. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Come on, say, your love. Your, your love, love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens. Awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens. Shout it out. Sing that, say. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out. Oh, what a love, say. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. Sing it again. We shout it out. What a love we found. What a love we found. Your love awakens, awakens, Come on, church, lift it up this morning. Me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Oh, we bless you this morning. Can you just lift him up right now? Come on, come on. We bless the Lord. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens. Awakens me. 
Ghost has to go.
spirit I, I don't normally come up and interrupt I do it from time to time but it's not normal for me to do that but I, I could not help but take advantage of this opportunity because I felt like that some of you refuse to sing I've got the best life now because when you assess the circumstance of your life it is not at all what you want I don't know who I'm talking to but I know that there's at least a handful of people in this building and you said that, yeah I can't sing that because I am not living my best life right now. What you need to understand is it doesn't matter what is happening in the peripheral. What matters is what God says. You'll notice that we've got the red side and the blue side. This is typically in Star Wars land. This is the bad guy side. This is the good guy side. We did that on purpose because the Bible says I place before you an option. I give you death I give you life, I tell you, choose life. But there's always this choice. Somebody say choice. There's always this option. There's always this decision to make a choice. And today you have a choice. You cannot sing I've got the best life now and keep living frustrated, disgusted, wishing things were different. Or you can start saying I've got the best life from a place of faith, from a place of, you know what? I'm just gonna dare to believe God. I'm just gonna extend my faith and declare, even though everything around me says it's not the case, the Word of God says, I've got the best life. I've got the best life now. Come on, sing it with all you got. Living the best life now. Turn up the volume, lift up your voice. Oh, oh, oh. 
to receive that this morning. How many believe that this morning? Come on, come on. Worship Jesus in this place. Is he giving your life? Worship him in this place. If he's brought you out of something, worship him in this place. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, oh. Jesus. Just begin to open it up in your mouth and just lift up a sound of worship, a sound of freedom. Oh, the sun sets free, it's free indeed. So God, we worship you in that place today. We worship you in the place of freedom. We don't worship in the place of, of, of bondage. We worship in the place of freedom. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. That's it, worship us. Just a few more moments. Just begin to open it up your mouth and Saturate this place with worship in the place of freedom. We are living We are Jesus, I'm alive in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, we love you. God, we adore your name. There's nobody like you, Jesus in all of the earth. God, we're so overwhelmed by your presence. We're overwhelmed by the reckless love from you. It flows to us daily, even when we don't deserve it. Even when we messed up, his love will continue to reach to us. Anybody grateful for that testimony? That even when we messed up, his love will continue to reach to us. Lift up your voice and thank him for his love in the room. Lift up your voices and thank him for his unconditional love in the room. His agape love that, cont that continues to flow from us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Thank you, Lord. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so good to me. Come on, let's sing it together all the way over. All the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Say it all, chases. All chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night. Come on, say, I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Y'all got a church set. Still you give yourself. See all the overwhelming. That's it. Never ending. Reckless love of God. Now somebody lift up your hands. Lift up your voices and worship him for that. Come on, open up your voice and lift up your worship up to him. And bless him for his love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Listen. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Yes, Lord. You have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have, God. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so good to me. Say, oh, the overwhelming, all oh, the overwhelming.
gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. Woo. It will to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh Lord it is the blood that gives me strength Woo! I feel that in the room y'all from day Today, it will never lose its power. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. All oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And we say, today for the atoning work that was accomplished through your son on Calvary's cross over 2,000 years ago and we praise you that we were given another year to live for you, to declare your goodness in the earth, to proclaim how wonderful, how gracious and how mighty you are. We thank you for the privilege of being called your children, of being sons and daughters of the Most High. God, we pray that you would govern the uh, affairs of this service and this day. We desire only to bring you glory and honor. We only want to get closer to you. So help us, Father, as we push and we press in this new year. As we are on day five of our new year, God, we speak great grace. For five is the number of grace. We thank you for great grace. Covering us, Father, covering our families, covering our children. Move right now in our harvest kids. Move right now in our nursery. God, govern the affairs of our children. Speak to them as only you can. We lift them up for before you, oh God, and we thank you for doing things we can't do. 
we give you access. We give you, Father, with our yieldedness and our submission, we give you permission to do what you will in our lives. As Jesus taught us to pray, not our will, but yours be done. May it be in earth as it is in heaven. We declare that in this building this morning in Jesus' name. We are going to move right now into a time of communion. You should have been given the communion as you came in this morning. Please get that in and make that ready. The prerequisite for receiving the Lord's table is not church membership. It's only that you have a relationship with Jesus, that you've named him Lord of your life and you've given him access to your life and you're serving him. That's the only prerequisite for the Lord's table. But what I want to do is I want to take just a few moments right now and make sure that everyone's where they need to be with the Father. Make sure everyone's where they need to be with the Lord. So if that's not you and you're like, I would love to partake, but I'm not where I need to be, well, this is a great opportunity for you to get where you need to be, to just name his name and allow him to be the Lord of your life. Say with me, say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, that you gave your life so that I could have life. I confess you now as my Savior. Forgive me, redeem me, cleanse me, come into my life. In Jesus' name, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Empower me, O oh God, by your spirit. In your name I pray. And everybody say with a loud voice, amen. Now slap your hands together and thank God for salvation. Hallelujah. Go ahead and reveal the bread, the wafer part. There's a little area of cellophane there. Just take that part off. Make sure that you don't. Uh, take the foil back, just the cellophane, and sometimes it's a little tricky. You've got to hold your mouth the right way to get it open sometimes. I'm having one of those moments right now. I'm going to ask for help. <laughs> Go ahead and open up that cellophane portion, expose the bread. The Bible says that Jesus took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave thanks, and he said to them, thank you, sir. he said to them, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat it in remembrance of me. Uh, for those of you that might not be aware, we are on our 21-day fast. Today is day one of our 2020 21-day fast. And we always take time in every service during our fast to observe the Lord's table. Why? Because it helps to keep us focused. It helps to keep us mindful of why we do what we do. I'm not trying to lose weight, so I'm fasting. I'm wanting to draw closer to God. I'm wanting to see things more clearly. So I'm abstaining from food. I'm abstaining from entertainment. I'm abstaining from things that can shift my focus. And I'm determined for God to speak to me. I'm, I'm having one of those Jacob moments where he says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. This 21-day fast is one of those Jacob moments. It's, it, it's one of those things that we say, I'm not relenting. I'm not giving up. Now, I'm going to talk to some folk that have been in the kingdom a long time. Those individuals that don't let up. That, that back in the day, we would say that grab hold of the horns of the altar and know how to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For those of you that are younger, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's okay. I'll explain it later. But the truth of the matter is we can't do anything without what he did. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. So we partake of this community because Jesus said you should do this often. So we do it in obedience and remembrance of his sacrifice. So, Father, we right now pray over this bread. We pray that it would bless us and it would be blessed to the nourishment of our bodies and us to your service. But, God, we also declare that it would make an imprint in us spiritually about what these next 21 days are going to look like between you and us. Father, we declare that as it becomes one with us, that your spirit would become one with us in an even greater fashion than we've ever known before. If we've been serving you for 40 plus years, I pray, God, that in this next 21 days that you would blow our minds with where you take us and what you show us and where you lead us. 
We pray, God, that as we partake of this bread, that healing power would invade bodies in this room. Individuals that have known sickness, individuals that have known infirmity, God, we declare healing over every part of them. And we speak blessing over this bread. In Jesus' name, you can break it and then partake. Foil, expose the bread, the cup, excuse me. Had the body not been broken, the blood could not have been spilled. Had the blood not been spilled, salvation, repentance, remission of sin could not take place. It's only because of the blood. Not only could salvation and freedom and deliverance be, be brought, purchased for us, but also healing deliverance, joy, hope. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? All of that is possible because of the blood. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for moving in this place. I thank you for blessing this cup. May we be mindful of what it represents. May we be mindful, God, of what it represents represents our freedom, our deliverance. It represents sonship and daughterhood. We thank you for those privileges that come as a direct result of our confession that you are Savior and Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your obedience. Bless it now. You may partake. In Jesus' name. 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 Once you partake, and just lift your hands. And just worship him for just a few seconds. Remind yourself of what he did and who he is and who he is to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's power. For it reaches. For it reaches. Lift your voice, saying it flows. Happy New Year, family. Happy New Year. It's 2020. Is everybody ready for a new year? It's a new day. It's a new season. Amen. I love a new year. It always feels like a, a blank slate. Amen. Just a fresh start. The spirit of my husband has gotten on me. I'm trying to get this right because I know he's looking at it. Am I, is it right? <laughs> 
listen, I've got a few announcements for you this morning. I want you, before we get into the word, I'm so excited about this series, The Force Within. Um, if you're sitting out here uh, like me, that you may not be a big Star Wars fan. You may not um, have ever even seen one movie. I've, I've at least seen a few of them. Um, don't worry, it's all going to make sense, okay? It's, you're going to get something out of this series, we promise you. Um, but it'll go to the next level for any of our Star Wars fans that are in the house this whole month long. It's going to be a, a great month. But what I want you to do, because we're going to get ready here in just a moment to receive our morning tithe and offering. So go ahead and get begin to get that together. And if our ushers will begin to get ready and to get into place, I want to remind you that today is Mission Sunday. Mission Sunday, and it is our prayer in 2020 Harvest that we will give more to missions than we gave last year or that we gave the year before. And so I want you to right now, what, what our goal has been, has been $20, the first of the month, to give towards missions. We have missionaries all over the world, and we want to bless them. They need blessing. How many know, like, I'm just so excited God did not call me to, to those some particular mission fields. I don't know about you. I'm excited to serve here in the United States of America. So, But what I want to do is be a blessing to those missionaries. And so I want to encourage you to get, if you don't have $20, you're not prepared to do that today, that's totally fine. Just get something. And in, in just a moment when we give our tithe and offering, you can mark on your envelope missions, and we'll make sure that that gets to where it needs to get. But if you're a guest with us today, can we put our hands together for any first? time guest or maybe second or third time you've returned once you return we call you family and so I want to encourage you to text welcome to the number that's on the screen you're gonna see that in just a minute and you can text welcome and then what we're gonna do is just send you some information about why we believe God has placed us here in the Northeast region of Florida maybe you don't prefer texting there was a connection card there on your seat you can fill that out instead, and you can either put it in these uh, offering receptacles or take it to the back tables there in the back. Either way you choose, either way, at the back there are gifts that we have for those of you that are first-time guests with us today. So make sure when you exit uh, this morning service that you pick up one of those gifts for you. Also, on Friday, January the 17th, in here, 7.30 p.m., Bishop Ray Willis and many uh, churches from the Sunshine ne Network Ministries are going to be uh, gathering together on that Friday night. Again, not at 7, but 7.30. 30, and we'll be gathering in this place for a night of prayer and worship. We've not had a night of prayer and worship for many months, so we're excited to do that. So please make sure you make plans to join us. Uh, also on January, this is a family night. Family night, in fact, starts back this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Family night will start back um, this Wednesday. Uh, I didn't discuss with you prayer. Does prayer start back tomorrow as well? Monday night prayer, 6 to 7, starts back in here. But on the 15th, on January the 15th, we are uh, bringing back Food, Friends, and Faith Night. For those of you that don't know uh, what that is, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the back, we have dinner prepared. Um, it's $8 per person or uh, $30 for a family of four. Now, yes, I realize we're fasting, um, but this is the thing is we're going to have options for those that are doing a Daniel fast. And I don't know how many, and you don't have to raise your hand, but some people may not be really familiar with fasting. Like you, you may be hearing that terminology for the first time. And I, I want to encourage you to get in God's word because the New Testament talks about it doesn't, Jesus doesn't tell his disciples if you choose to fast. But his, literally what he says to his disciples in the New Testament is when you fast. So in other words, I don't know about you, but when I read that, I understand that to me that a disciple is a faster. A, a disciple of Christ is someone who lives a life of fasting. Now, maybe not every day of your life. No, but there are seasons, there are days, there are times. And when you study out the word, and I'm just going to drop a little bit of fasting nuggets here for those that are like, oh, no, not fasting, not being a part of that. You know, there's many fasts throughout the Bible. There were one-day fasts in the Bible. There were three-day fasts. There were seven-day fasts. The one that we're referring to is a 21-day fast. Daniel did a 21-day fast. 
And when you study out exactly what he, because the word fasting, it literally means to cover your mouth. It means you're not eating. And I want you to understand that here at Harvest Ministries, we're not the fasting police. So like if, if I see you eat, you know, at the KFC drive through you know, I, that's on you. I'm not judging you and you don't judge me, right? Because some people may be eating some protein and others may not. The Daniel fast is, it said he ate no pleasant foods. Is what There were a couple things he said. He said he, that he ate no meat, uh, no pleasant foods. You can go and study that out. Whatever. What is something pleasant to you? Because, see, you know, for some of us, you may be on medications and you can't go without eating. You, you have to have certain things. We get that. I get that. So for you, maybe it's social media. You need to fast. Maybe you need to abstain from, from maybe playing video games. I don't know, any teenagers in the room, any, anybody that's addicted to those kind of things. Or, again, social media. There are lots of different things you can fast. Yes, in the Bible, because in those days, that was what was pleasurable to them. They gathered together, and they ate. And so, yes, in the Bible, you're not going to find fasting social media. But I want to encourage you, if that is something that would make a big impact in your life, do that. But, but the Daniel fast is, you know, pretty much uh, fish, vegetables, fruit. That, you can eat some brown rice with that, too. Um, so on Wednesday, January the 15th, um, we are going to be doing in the back our Food, Friends, and Faith night. And we will have a fasting option for those of us that are doing the Daniel fast. So it will be more vegetable-based soup and salad, and then there'll be an option, a soup base that has some protein in it for those that are adding protein into their, their fast. So again, I just want you to know there is therefore no, now no condemnation. Amen? You do you, boo. All right? All right. But this is what I want you to understand, is I absolutely love Isaiah, the 58th chapter, and I know I've got our ushers up here standing long, um, but let me, let me read this to you, and I didn't even bring my glasses, but hopefully... This is, what, this is what the Word of God says about fasting. I need y'all to get this in you and to get excited about fasting. I have seen God do some big things in my, my mind, my body, my spirit, my church, my family, because I abstained from something. I sacrificed something. And, and when I was uh, normally eating this, I instead took that time to pray. And this is what fasting does, okay? In Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verse 6, it says, this is what God says. No, this is the kind of fasting I want. I want free those who are wrongly in prison. How many know that some of us have people imprisoned up here? They're, they're not in, in a, you don't have them prison, in prison somewhere. No, like we are holding people prison. It's time to let those people go. If, if you're going to begin this fast, let those people go in your brain. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. And do not hide from relatives who need your help. I love that. And then listen, this is what we can expect when we fast like we're supposed to. Then your salvation will come like the dawn, and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call, the Lord will answer, yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your fingers and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water where, when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. And you can keep reading the Isaiah, Isaiah the 58th chapter, but it just talks about the power of a fast. Amen? And so I want to get you excited. Whether you are fasting cakes and donuts or maybe Coca-Cola or Sprite or maybe you are going on an all fast, no food, just water and juices, make sure you know what you're doing. Whatever you are doing, I want you to expect Isaiah 58, amen, that good things are coming to your life, to your mind, to your family, to your body, to your finances, to your church, to our country, to your spirit, man, amen. Let's begin to fast. 
So I want you right now, if you're prepared to give, go ahead and stand to your feet. Let's lift that offering up in this place. Father God, we love you so much. We're so excited to be called your sons and daughters, and we're excited to release our tithe, our offering, our seed to you in this place. We are cheerful givers today in Jesus' name. As you are being released, our Harvest Middle, you guys are being released to our Next Step classroom. So 6th, 7th, 8th graders, you can be released to the Next Step classroom. Extend your hands toward the front. All right. We'll wait. Anybody else that needs to give, we're ready. We're ready to receive it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We've spoken a blessing. Now we physically lay hands and we declare multiplication. We declare overflow and we declare increase in the mighty, powerful, and matchless name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your service today. Well, Happy New Year. I know you have probably been told that a thousand times already, um, but it's still a, a new year, and I am I'm stoked about this new year. I believe that it is going to be a phenomenal year. Some people say, well, I, I, yeah, you know, Brother Preacher, I've, I've been hearing that my whole life. Every year just keeps on being the same way as the other years. Well, and one of the reasons why that happens that way is because we expect the same thing to keep happening. We don't expect there to be change. We don't have expectancy for things to shift. We expect the same things to happen, and you know what happens? The same things, all right? And so I really want to speak to you about your expectancy. I want you to speak to you about the things that you are believing God to come into your life things that you're believing to achieve or obtain in your life. Um, later on this week, well, actually later on today, we'll be, uh, Chelsea's going to help me. We're going to get up today's declaration, which is for this week. It's an individual declaration. It's what you will speak as an individual over your life. Uh, as a matter of fact, while I'm talking about it, I'm going to go ahead and just read it to you. Um, we don't have it on the screens this morning because it was, a, it, was, it was an oversight on my part. But we start with 3 John, the 7th chapter, the 2nd verse. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I declare 2020 will be a year of prosperity for me. Anybody could stand to have some prosperity? Okay, well, good. About 50 of y'all will have it. Um, I will have doors of opportunity to open in my schooling profession, my finances, and my relationships. The Lord's direction in my life will become clearer, and relationships that need to be mended will heal, while those that are harmful and keep me from my purpose will be cut off. The blessings of the Lord will be evident in my life and provide opportunities for me to share His goodness with others. My spiritual life will prosper as well, and the Holy Spirit will bring revelation and greater understanding to me. As I spend time in the Word, my health will also prosper, and healing will take place in areas where sickness once was. I will receive supernatural strength in my spirit and my body. 2020 will be a year of prosperity for me because as my soul prospers, it is God's overwhelming desire then to see me blessed. So what I want you to do, that's going to be on our social media page this week. I want you to get that, download it, you know, copy it to your phone and speak that over yourself at least once a day. Some of y'all need to speak that over yourself about 15 times a day to overwhelm the thoughts of the repetition of yesterday. Some of us know what it is to be overwhelmed by things that are happening around us. I think it's time we overwhelm the things happening around us with the Word of God. And that's a choice. That's a decision that we've got to make. And so our declaration, that's going to be the one for this week. 
and then we'll pick up another one next week that will be over our church and our community, and then one on the third week that is going to be over our world, over the IPHC, and our government. We'll be declaring things over all those things. We're not going to leave anything left unchecked. We're going to declare stuff over everything in Jesus' name. Why? Because I believe it will make a difference. Because Jesus, excuse me, God tells us in the book of Genesis that he spoke and what he spoke happened. Then the apostle Paul says that we have as believers the same power that God had to speak to those things that be not as though they were. So we've got to begin to declare what God says. Now you can't just declare any old thing. You've got to declare what God says. But when you declare what God says, then what God says comes to fruition in your life. Everything written down on this confession and declaration is scripture. Now, it's in 2020 vernacular and, and terminology, but it's all predicated and based on the word of God. So you're declaring the word over your life. And when you declare the word over your life, the word happens. Are you hearing me? So I'm excited about that. Uh, for those of you that uh, have, have signed the God's guarantee and you've been tithing and you've been giving uh, I, I got another testimony this morning. Somebody just about knocked me down on the hall, just so excited. Pastor, I can't wait to tell you what happened. Uh, they, they related to us that they're, they're on a fixed income, but they began to tithe anyway. And they were already behind on a regular basis, and so a parent would have to help them with each month. Well, when they started to tithe, God started pouring out blessings, and they said, I can't believe it, but... I was able to pay my parent back for what they had been giving, tell them I don't need it for this month and already have the month's bills already paid. Why? Because the Bible works. Oh, well, I got to get a little bit more agreement than that in this building. The Word of God works. Come on, somebody. And so I, I'm stoked about the application of, of the word of God in our lives because we expect it to happen. When this person first started to tithe, I encouraged them. I said, listen, I need you to set your faith high. This is one of those areas where God says, test me. I give you permission to test me. Some of y'all are quiet because you haven't done it yet. God says, challenge him by testing him, by giving him his first tenth. If you will do that, the Lord will open up windows of heaven. The, the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you don't have capacity for. I don't think that we believe that. I do believe it. I firmly believe it. I've seen it exemplified in my life repeatedly. I've seen God do ridiculous things in my life. I mean, stuff that didn't, didn't make sense to other folks. Why, why? How is that possible? I had somebody say, why are you so blessed? I said, because I'm a tither. It's not because I'm perfect, because I'm not, but I am a tither. I, 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 everybody knows that about me. I, I, I don't brag about it. I, I'm excited to be obedient to God. There's never a dollar that comes into my family and into my life and into my hands that doesn't get tithed on. Not one. And my mom and dad told me that when I was just a little kid, and I've never stopped doing it. So there's never been a day in Dave Reagan's life that I haven't tithed. And I'm not going to stop now. Because I know it works. <laughs> Colonel Sanders started tithing long before he was saved. Because he knew it worked. Yes. And he built it in to the corporation to where they're still tithing whether you know it or not today. Yes. It is written into the corporate laws of how they have done business that they tithe. Publix does the same thing. Did y'all know that? Yes. J.C. Penney's does the same thing. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, the, now the, the last the, that I had checked and I would researched that, that was still a, a reality. Those three corporations uh, still tied. Why? Because it works. Yeah. Yeah. Oprah ties. She doesn't call it tithing. She tells you giving 10% of her uh, income away to charity. But maybe that's tithing. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. yeah. just sit into a coma when I said the word Oprah. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it works. The Word of God works. Say that when you say the Word. Works. Say it again, the Word. Works. I know I'm 
shouting, but I feel like preaching today. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm excited about what this fast is going to produce in my life and in this ministry. I'm just excited about it. What happens at the Jacksonville campus and at our Baker campus. Let me get into this word today because I'll, I'll, get, I'll get all excited and I'll run all over the place. Grab your Bible and turn to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 2. Uh, and then flip over to Isaiah 55, 9. Put your finger in Isaiah 55, 9. Or if you don't have your Bible or you don't even know where any of that is at, we got you covered. It's going to be on the screen. It's already up there. Romans 12, 1 through 2. And Isaiah 55, 9. We can stand for the reading of the word of God. We like to honor the reading of the word by standing. For those of you that are guests with us today, we are absolutely stoked that you're here today. We don't believe it's by accident, but by divine appointment, we're honored that you are here. We thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. Romans 12, 1 through 2. For all of you that are watching us via Facebook Live or on YouTube, we're excited that you're watching as well. May you be blessed. Romans 12, 1 through 2, Isaiah 55, 9. Here we go. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Say think. think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Isaiah 55, 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm going to minister to you briefly on the subject of learning how to unlearn. Father, I pray that you would open up my understanding, open up our hearts and our minds, and deposit this word on the inside of us so that we can be transformed and changed and be more like you and less like us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said with a loud voice, Amen. you may be seated in his presence. And if you wouldn't mind directing your attention to the screens for the clip that goes with these scriptures. We'll never get it out now. So certain are you. Always with you, it cannot be done. Do you not think that I say? Master, moving stones around is one thing. This is totally different. No. No different, only different in your mind. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do, or do not. There is no try. So you gotta unlearn, you gotta unlearn. what you have learned. Now, I know that some of you are like, how in the world are you gonna preach the word of God from some secular movie. <laughs> well, first of all, you have to understand the bedrock of who your pastor is. I'm a kingdom man, not a church man. Therefore, I do not see anything as sacred or secular. I see all things as usable by God. I'm not living any longer under the old covenant where only certain people could do certain things after certain things happen in their lives. I believe in the new covenant which declares I am in him and he is in me. Therefore, everything he wants to do in me, he can and will do. If he can talk to a prophet through a donkey in the Old Testament, he can talk to a pastor through Yoda in 2020. is, are you wanting to hear from him bad enough that you'll listen to him through whoever he speaks through? Yes. 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 See, this is a, a powerful preacher. 
truthful point because the biggest problem we have in the body of Christ is we're trying to jam in the gospel and the word of God while everything else remains intact in our minds. And we need, according to Romans 12, a transformation. Say transformation. That happens in your mind. Problem is, and I talked to our intercessors, and I've I've addressed it from from this pulpit in times past. But the problem is, we have a culture that is contrary to the kingdom. What are you talking about? The environment that we were raised and groomed in created our culture. Now, Webster's Dictionary defines culture as a pattern or system of learning. It defines it even as ethnicity or, or uh, the, the region that you're raised in or this, that, and the other. And all those things are applicable. But I've got folk that share the same skin tone that I do that have a completely different culture than me. So I don't want to get wrapped up in race and ethnicity and those other things. Even though they help to establish culture, that is not the only defining element to culture. Let me give you an example. Over here, we have the Reagan family. On this side over here, we have the Denson family. Okay? My dad is the Reagan family. The Reagan family consisted of Mac and Kelly Reagan, who gave birth to Mike Reagan, and then gave birth to Steve Reagan, who died at a year and a half years of age, and then they gave birth to Scott Reagan, and that was the family nucleus. Grandpa was in the military. He was a sergeant in the army and traveled all over the world and was built and sounded like a drill sergeant. When he told you he loved you, he scared you. You think I've got a booming voice. I don't have a voice at all compared to my grandfather. My grandfather could stop traffic with his voice. Grandpa and granny went to Griffin First Baptist Church. And that's where my dad was raised and he was groomed in a Southern Baptist church. One culture. Other culture. The Denson family. Malachi and Inez Denson are the patriarchs. Malachi was raised independent Baptist. Some of y'all know what that means. Others of you are just looking at me. It's totally different from Southern Baptist to independent Baptist. Whole different set of theology. All right? For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about yet, independent Baptists believe that if you are spirit-filled and you speak in tongues, you're going to hell. They still believe that to this day. They still, I'm not going to talk about their schools and where their pastors and teachers and and leaders are, but but just believe me. Just trust me. Grandpa was raised like that. Granny was Pentecostal. But Granny loved her husband, and so they compromised and went to a Southern Baptist church. So my mom and her seven brothers and sisters, there's eight in the family. They were all raised in that environment. Now, there were a set of four that were born and raised first, and then there were another set of four that came up behind them. So that my oldest uncle, my, my mom's oldest brother, Sebron, was old enough to be her father. Okay? How many of you realize that those first four had a totally different culture than the last four? Are you hearing what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, because of a medical situation that happened in the family finances got taken out from underneath them and that last four set. So that last four set were raised in poverty. The first four were not. Completely different cultures. Same family. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Now, the independent Baptist girl marries the Southern Baptist boy. And they want to have kids. And it's not easy. Takes them a long time. I've always been stubborn. My point in all of this is 
and I've told you this before, but I, I want this to sink into you. God did not care that my mom's theology was that God didn't speak anymore. That didn't stop God from talking. So when my mom was at her deathbed because she almost died from the fifth baby that she miscarried, and the doctor said, you can't have another one or you will die next time, God spoke to her and said, no, 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 you'll have a son, you'll name him David, he'll have a heart after me, and he will build great works for me and my kingdom. God said that to a woman who said God doesn't speak. Because God doesn't care about your culture. Let me read this to you. Beloved friends, what should we do or should our proper response be to God's marvelous mercies? And then it goes on. And then he tells us how to secure it. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. Be inwardly transform say transform see some of you wonder why I agitate the Hades out of you when I speak it's because I come against the culture that's on the inside of you because it had to become it had to it had to, it had to, it had to come against mine and it, please don't misunderstand I'm not where I need to be yet God is still wrecking my own culture on a regular basis by saying, no, that might be American, but that's not kingdom. Oh, I want to go there so bad. So I was, I was born to an independent Baptist mama and a Southern Baptist daddy who started to teach me and gave me a viewpoint from which I view all things. This is called culture. It's how I see stuff. So they were raised that women are to be quiet in church. Right? But God called my mom to preach. And I'm going to be real with you. My father was an exquisite teacher, but my mom could shut the corn as a preacher. Mom would fire, oh my God, she was a fireball when she preached. But let's, let's understand something. They were raised in a culture where that wasn't acceptable. Okay? So it created a lens by which they saw how God would or would not do things. Okay? Are you, are you picking up what I'm laying down? All right, now mom and dad gave birth to me, but then I went to school. Ray, give me your glasses. Then I went to school. Man, these are cool glasses. I don't know that I'm going to be able to see when I put them on, though. So I've got the culture that I was raised in, and then I start going to school. I will be stationary for the remainder of this point. <laughs> Reach your hands out to Ray right now. <laughs> Father, I declare... <laughs> Sight to him in Jesus' name. All of a sudden, I started to have ideas and thoughts and patterns, friendships that started to then continue to influence my vantage point. I went on from elementary school, I think, to Kwana's over here. I'm not going back up on the stage anymore. So I go from elementary school, middle school, high school. That didn't help anything. Get through all of those lower level of education and started going through college. And all of these things are starting to influence the way that I view stuff. It influences my culture. And then I want to get where God wants me to get. And I got to go through all of this. And what God is wanting to do is strip me down to where all that I see is his perspective. All that I hear is what he is saying. All that I allow is what God is doing in my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are struggling to see right because God is working on your vision. But I 
I ain't never gone through nothing like this before. I've never had that. That's because you've never been in a kingdom church before. You know what religious society is like, but you don't know what it's like to be a part of the kingdom. Ah! Sorry, got a little righteous indignation. Just had to, just had to get it out. This is the truth. God is right now addressing the culture of the church on a level like I've never seen him do it before. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a useful tool in his hand to where I abandon the cultures that have influenced me so that all that I get is him in purity and in truth. Let me address another one. I can't preach today because I'm not in a suit and tie. No, I might wear a suit and tie next week. You don't know. You, I might bust up in flannel one week, a suit and tie the next week. But the truth of the matter is it doesn't, it's not based on what my, my outward appearance is. It's based on what's on the inside of me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so fo- li- listen, it's, it's so bad that when I invite people from the outside, they say, how should we dress at your church? You know what I tell them? Clothes. Just have clothes on I don't care what clothes, what clothes they are, just have clothes on. We, 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 we. Just have some clothes on. Are you here? But all of these things help to assign culture. We, didn't they do a great job today, the praise team? It was awesome today, wasn't it? They were, they were in. They took us in, and they took us in fast. Let me address culture. Culture states, wow, we had a good church service today, didn't we, Sister Jennifer? Well, then next Sunday, we're starting off with that song again. You're going to lead it. And then that tall feller. He's going to sing the next song. And that short guy that sure couldn't wail, he's going to close it out. Because it was all based on the song, the person that sang the song, the run. Culture would tell us that that's what did it. Not the heart of the people to just hear from God. Y'all give me a praise break. One, two, three, four. Some of y'all were raised in a church where that is church. And if that doesn't happen, you haven't had church. That is culture. That is not the kingdom. Ah! I, I told everybody, I'm going to make some people mad today. Now, please don't misunderstand. I like that. That makes me want to run. Makes me want to high-five my neighbor, do six laps around the building. Yeah, I love that. But that is not the quintessential definition of his presence. Him coming in and sitting down on us is the quintessential part of his presence. Our problem is we recognize that more than we recognize him. Listen, I'm a professional church person. I was raised in church. They say if you do something for 10,000 times that you're a, pro- a professional, you're an you're a, you're a, 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 a expert. And I've been in church my whole life. I've done church more than 10,000 times. You know what I discovered? We can do church without him. When God gave me the opportunity to pastor, I said, God, I don't ever want to have a church service that you're not in the middle of it. I don't ever want to do anything that you're not just sitting down on all of it. If you're not there, I'm not there. I want presence more than I want anything. And our, Our issue is we are accustomed to how God did something then. 
and it becomes the pattern by which how God does everything from then on. And that creates a culture in the church. And then we start having denominations that build theology around that happening. And then when God moves on and does something else, well, that's not God because it doesn't look like this. And so this organization starts judging and talking about and condescending over that organization, and now we have division. And we wonder why that we've got more churches right now in America than probably ever before. Right now, those churches are filled with thousands of people. There are more churches now than ever before, and our world is worse off now. Why? Because we're busy building our own culture and not pointing people to the kingdom. You have to understand, I am an apostolic leader, and there are some things that God has called me with a vengeance to destroy. Religion, racism, tradition, and poverty. I hate those four things. I spend much of my life praying against, coming against, destroying them spiritually, coming against them, binding them. All the, I do that on a regular basis. But I've also learned that if I just focus my attention on the destruction of those things and I don't build something new in its place, they will resurrect. So I just spend my life in this setting and circle of just trying to destroy religion and racism and tradition and poverty. I'm trying to destroy religion and racism. <laughs> God has called us instead of religion to build relationship. Relationship with him first and foremost. He's called us to instead of having racism to have unity. It blows my mind. We act like we're all going to go to heaven together, but we all can't go to church together. You got to understand that's a passion of mine. There is not going to be the Asian side of heaven, the Latino side of heaven, the Caucasian side of heaven, the wild Caucasian side of heaven, the black side. Because some of us are wild. We white, but we got it. I got people tell me all the time, you were born the wrong color. I, said, I know. But there's not that division in heaven. There's just us sons and daughters of God. So I believe that when people walk into this building, they should walk into a heaven environment. They should walk into what they expect heaven to be like. I kept going. Because the time kept telling me it's 11.33, but it's been 11.33 plus 30 minutes. I just checked my watch, and I'm out of time right now. <laughs> it's like, man, it's been 11.33 a long time. <laughs> Listen to me. God is wanting to agitate your culture. And the way that he does that is he, he challenges your mind. He's challenging my mind. I've got to get to this part, though, but I don't want to blast through it too quickly. But I want to establish ten elements that are the culture of Harvest Ministries. It's the way in which we've been functioning for the last four years. But now we have clearly defined it. And you're going to start seeing it posted all over the building. All ten of these items. Number one. We honor being kingdom-focused, Jesus-centered, and spirit-led. That's who we are. I make no apologies about it. I point people to that reality, and I declare it. We are kingdom-focused, Jesus-centered, and spirit-led. Number two, we honor being relentless in our pursuit for souls through love and sacrifice. 
Pastor, I thought Jesus did the sacrifice. I know, but there's some elements that I got to sacrifice too. As a matter of fact, we are, we are nearing the point to where we're going to have to include the second service, not just for our wave services, but on a regular basis. I'm, I'm telling you, let me just inform you of what's coming. It's got to happen because people are not going to come and be crammed on a regular basis. They refuse to do it. So we're going to make provision. We're going to have two services. That requires sacrifice because you work one and you worship the other. Are you hearing me? And you alternate. Now you're in church about an hour and 15 minutes longer than you were before. There's where the sacrifice comes in. Does that make sense? Say it's a new culture. Say it's the kingdom culture. Number three, the commitment to disciple through every phase of life. Not just new babes. And when I, when I do this, I'm not just talking about children. I'm talking about babes in Christ. They might be 50 years old, but they're babes in Christ. I'm not just talking about discipling them. I'm talking about discipling the person that's been saved for 30 years, and all of a sudden they lose their spouse. And they weren't expecting that because they were believing God for healing. And now there's a big hole on the inside of them, and they need a family to disciple. I don't want to leave any of them out. Where do I fit in that picture? Well, how long have you been saved? There's a discipleship area that you can fit into across the board because you never grow out of the need to be discipled. I said you never grow out of the need to be discipled. And let me, let me talk to those of us who have a badge of honor, and I wear it sometimes proudly, called church hurt. I guarantee you that there's nobody in this room that's been hurt any worse than me in church. I had my Royal Ranger leader pick me up by the hair of my head and grab me and pick me up by my hair, my feet dangling off the ground, and walk me across the campus and threw me at my dad. And I'm supposed to lead people like this? A lot of words flew across my head, even as a kid. When they have, that's just one incident, incident. I mean, just time after time after time. This is what I learned, though. I learned that hurt happens everywhere. The enemy likes to perpetrate and make it be worse because it's in the church. But hurt happens everywhere. I got, I got, I got good gospel news for us. I just grabbed a Rod Parsley moment there for a second. Got good gospel news for you. <laughs> Showing my heritage there. I've got good news. Gather together with other people that share the same hurts that you do so that we can guard and protect one another and we can help others who have encountered the same hurt but haven't got over it yet. That's a novel idea. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say discipleship. Number four. We honor diversity in all ethnicities and in all generations. We did not say cultures. And I want to explain why. Because there's only one culture. And that's the kingdom. There's only one culture. And that's the kingdom. Y'all ain't no better than they were. I was expecting at least a little bit louder over here. There's one culture. That's the kingdom. I don't care what your skin color is. I don't care where you were born. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care any of those things. I care. Have you named the name of Jesus? You hear what I'm saying? Is the time okay? Y'all caught the time up. All right. All right. Now, there's a joke in this in this next one. It's a joke. Elbow your neighbor say it's a joke. The whole thing isn't a joke. There's just a joke in one of these, in one of these areas. Number five, we believe in honor, freedom, and all forms of worship except tambourines. That's a joke. I'm just playing. I am just playing. Just playing. <laughs> so that's a joke. I included that to just be humor, just to be funny. All right? But we believe in all forms of worship. 
What she mean you believe in all forms of worship there, brother preacher? In other words, we dance in this church. We celebrate the arts in this church. We have actors and we do plays and we do drama and we do interpretive art when we've even had an artist come in and draw in the middle of service and paint and do things. We believe in all forms of obedience to God. Let me keep going. We believe in all forms of worship so we know how to worship in the nursery. We know how to worship in kids' church. Well, I, I keep missing the Sunday morning service. It's on TV. Well, it's not on TV. It's on live stream, internet. You get what I'm saying. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? We believe in all forms of worship. We believe in excellence. We honor excellence in ministry, character, and life. I want to preach all of these, y'all. Number seven, we believe and we honor living out audacious faith in prayer, giving, and serving. you got to understand something. I'm a serving pastor. I believe in serving. I do it, and I want to do it with other people that love it just like I do. I love to serve. Nah, you don't get it. I, I love to serve. I was, in, I, was in, I was in the gym the other day. And, and this girl was, was cleaning all the weights, where the, all the weights are. And, the, and I work out in the free weight section, so I was over there, and she's taking all these dumbbells off. And she's fit. I mean, she works at the gym. She's a trainer. But she went to pick up the 90-pound dumbbell, and she had to use two hands. And so I thought, well, okay, well, I just grabbed the 90-pound dumbbell, and I put it off. I said, I just want to help you. And so I, I went back to my workout, and she looked at me. I don't work at the gym. I work out of the gym. I wasn't getting paid to lift that 90 pounds for her, but I wanted to help her. When I walk into a restroom and, to, and paper towels are all over the floor and there's water all over the cabinet, I don't walk up to the manager and say, hey, y'all need to do something about that restroom. Your employees are horrible. Like a lot of Christians do. What I do is I grab a handful of paper towels because I don't want to get their cooties. I said cooties. I don't think I've said cooties since I was seven years old. I grab all those paper towels. I throw them away. I get some more paper towels. I wipe off the counter. I throw it away. And then I go to the manager and I say, hey, just want to let you know, I know how things happen. The, the, the bathroom was a little messed up. I fixed it. I got it all clean. Everything's good. But I just wanted to make you aware of that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what I do. That's, now, I'm not saying that you got to do that. Not necessarily. I believe in being audacious in my serving. To where I don't just serve at church. Check test one. One last, one last story here and we're going to move on. I also learned something a long time ago. We used to have the manager of the Burger Queen that went to our church. Y'all remember Burger Queen back in the day? Raise your hand if y'all know Burger Queen. I wanted, I wanted to date all the people that are old. I know none of them knew what Burger Queen was. Sid, did you know what Burger Queen was? I know. <laughs> manager of Burger Queen, she was cleaning up all of the trash. She was a tither and a giver. She said, God... I need you to bless. I got to have my rent this month. Rent was $300. She didn't have it, but she was a tither to give her. And she's cleaning up the Burger Queen restroom. And she picks up this, this, this paper towels that were wadded up in the corner. She picks it up. There's three $100 bills there. She said, now, now understand, she was the manager. There was a policy that you had to advertise that you had found the money. It had to sit in the safe for two weeks. And wait for the people to come back. But if they didn't come back and get it, whoever found it, it belonged to them. She was cleaning the bathroom. She put it aside like she needed to. And she said, God, whether it's that $300 or some other $300, I thank you for providing for me what I need. Nobody ever claimed it. She got that $300 and she paid her rent. So I clean up bathrooms. Daddy didn't raise no fool. She found three, I'm looking for four. 
Turn it back into the manager. Yeah, Dave Reagan. D-A-V-E-R-A-G-A-N. There's no E's in it. So you spell When I come back and get my money, I just want to make sure it gets to me. I am, I am being funny. That's not the reason why I clean up after him. But that's exactly the way that we're supposed to live. Say audacious. As a matter of fact, Bishop Ray Willis, in his very first sermon that he preached when I was the pastor at my installation day, he said, I've never said this before, but I need for you to be aware, this is an audacious pastor. Y'all remember that? Some of you weren't here then, but some of you do remember that. I will never forget it because I was like, wow, and he still loves me. Number eight, we honor creativity. Embracing gifts given by God to change the world. Number nine, we honor blessing our community. I know too often too many people curse their community. I believe that we should bless our community. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number ten, we honor working hard, playing hard. And this is where all of y'all are going to lose it and living healthy. Working hard, playing hard. And living healthy. Listen, I'm a, I got I to gotta stop. I'm, I'm out of time. The Bible says that God said, I'm not going to strive with man for always. So y'all living almost a thousand years is over. Man's days will be numbered 120. I need you to understand something. God never changed that. When Moses references the average living day or age in the, in the 70s, later on in the Old Testament, he was just talking about the average age at that time. It did not undo or undermine the promise of 120 years. I, mean, I don't want to live 120 years. Fine, I do. I'm going to take care of this temple so that it lasts, so that when I'm 120, it's not like this. You hear what I'm saying? So I'm 100. I'm, I'm banking on it, baby. I'm pushing 120 years. I'm going to be 47 this year. I ain't got half my life over with yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wait, put living healthy back up there. Living healthy. Everybody say living healthy. I want to challenge you. For those of you that are partnering with us on this fast, see how you feel at the end of 21 days. See how clear your mind is. See how that 3 o'clock in the afternoon where you want to take a nap feeling is gone. Because you're giving your body stuff that your body needs, not wants. I realize I'm talking to myself right now, too, because this year I have developed a fascination for chocolate. Y'all don't understand. I used to hate chocolate. People would think I was crazy. There was something wrong with me. I'm like, I don't like candy. I don't like chocolate. I don't like cake. I still really don't care for cakes unless it's Mama Nell's. Or some red velvet by the tall feller. But I'm not a big cake, a big cake guy. If, 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 well, okay, if you want to give me a, a cake for my birthday, it needs to be cheese cake. Cheesecake that's, that's about 39 degrees. My wife said we're fasting. I, I understand. My, my point in all of this is, is saying I understand what begins to happen to you physiologically. When you start doing these things, it helps you physically. It doesn't just help you spiritually. That, that's not the sole purpose. That's not why we do it. You don't fast to lose weight. Losing weight is a byproduct of fasting. It's not the primary reason. But it is a byproduct. And you also get mental clarity. And a lot of things happen. But I really want to encourage you. Really pray over 2020 about this being a year of health for you like you've never lived before. Not making a New Year's resolution, but being a kingdom believer. All right, I, I really want to keep preaching, but I've got to stop so that y'all will come back and hear me in the future. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm excited, though, that, you're, that you came today. Are y'all all right? Was this okay today? 
All right. Okay. I really want to encourage you. Stick this thing out. If you, how many of you have never fasted before? Raise your hand. You've never fasted before. Good. We've got, a, we've got quite a few in here. Awesome. Good. If you need any help whatsoever, please talk to us. We even have recipe books on things that are Daniel Fast approved. It's, that really is tasty food. It's good stuff. Uh, but it's on the Daniel Fast. It's biblically approved. Uh, we can get those things into your hands. We can help you with different things like that. But again, as Pastor Jeff already articulated, we are not the fasting police. It's not going to happen. Okay? Nor will we allow it to happen to you. So stand to your feet all over this building. We are back on Monday night prayer from 6 to 7. Wednesday night, family night from 7 to 8. It's going to be a great week. Invite individuals. I can't wait to be back for the rest of the force within. Make sure you take some pictures out in the lobby with the force within background. Post them on your social media profile. Share all the invites on our Facebook page. Let's pack the house out with individuals who want to get Jesus to be the force within them. I bless you now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I would that you prosper and be in help even as your soul prospers. I claim abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with you all the days of your life in all of your getting. Get understanding. Don't just discover but fulfill your destiny. Hug about 15 people before you leave this building and know that Jesus loves you. And so do we. Peace out, Harvest. What's up, everybody? everybody? Thank you so much for watching Harvest Live today. Absolutely. In fact, what we would like to invite you to do now is to hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss another message from us. Because we're excited about an opportunity to partner with you. We are. We also would like to give you an opportunity that if you would like to go one step farther in your partnership and click the Give Now link at the bottom of the page, that will enable us to continue to reach out to the people in Northeast Florida and around the world with the message of Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for your partnership and we're glad that you watched. Partner with us again in the future, and we'll see you soon.